Hey friends, I am here with my buddy Luna. Luna is our Siberian Husky and she and I will often get up early in the morning and go and take a walk. And it's the time of year when, when we get up, it's still dark to go for a walk. But after our 40, 45 minutes of walking, we get back and the sun has risen. And that's kind of a neat thing to take a walk while the sun is rising before the day comes rushing at you. And, um, and as you know, days can kind of come rushing at you. There's enough stuff that you know about each day. And then there's a whole lot of surprises that I can really bombard you and surprise you and overwhelm you from day to day. I, um, I bring that up, talking about a sunrise as we're having an evening devotion, because in the book of Numbers, chapter 3, uh, there was a group of Levites that God commanded to uh, set up their camps on the east side of the tabernacle where the sun would rise. And it, and it says that, as he told Moses and Aaron and their families where to live, he said, I want you to live on the east side where the sun would rise. And if they were living on the east side of the tabernacle where the sun would rise, you know what that meant? And they would be the first ones to see the sunrise each day, which means they would probably be the first ones to wake up that day. They didn't have alarm clocks. They woke up by the sun typically, which meant that their eyes were open before anybody else's and they were better prepared to face the day because they had a better idea of what was coming than anybody else who was in the camp with them. And I bet that made the rest of the campers feel safe, that there was somebody who was going to know what was coming, at least better than they did, and maybe be in a position to do something about it. And there's, um, you know, there's something important about the Israelites, the whole context of the book of Numbers that we need to keep in mind. There were about 2 million Israelites, as far as we can tell, and maybe in the world there were up to maybe 10 million other people in the world. And do you know what the Israelites knew about the lives of those other 10 million people? Nothing. Nothing. There was no worldwide news, there were no TV cameras, there were no social media feeds that they could follow of what was going on on the opposite side of the world. They knew nothing about what was going on in those lives. They only knew what was going on in their own lives and that was enough to really overwhelm them from time to time. And what's going on in your life, I bet that's enough to overwhelm you from time to time. But then of course you get the news from across the country, in other cities, other families, in other countries, in other places in the world where horrible things are happening. And it's not that we're unconcerned about those things. We are. They hit our hearts so powerfully. But it can be really, really overwhelming. And God knows that. And so he chooses somebody to wake up every day before you do, no matter what time you get up. He chooses somebody to stay awake longer than you do every night, no matter what time you go to bed. And the person he chooses for that is himself himself. In Psalm 121, it says that God never slumbers. He never sleeps. He never closes his eyes. He never takes a nap as he watches over you. As he watches over you. His love for you is constant. His protection over your life is consistent. And he will never lead you astray. And so maybe as you begin each day and as you end each day, Instead of listening to all the different news of all the different things that are happening out there, maybe just open up the Word or, or listen to something like you're doing right now that reminds you that God's guidance is always the best one to lead us through each day. That God's voice is always the best one to hear. It's okay to shut off those other things from time to time. It's okay to turn off the news and to not check the social media feed and to not check email and to just rest in the assurance that your God always has his eyes on you. Rest well tonight, my friends. Your God is watching you.